Mr. Deputy Speaker, I rise to support the resolution for the Minister of Finance to borrow US $6 billion to finance the construction of social infrastructure and other facilities damaged by Tropical Storm Brett under an education rehabilitation climate linked facility. Mr. Speaker, I do so because from day one, when the Honorable Prime Minister decided to look to the east and to select the Honorable Member from Denry North as the Minister of Education, he bestowed a lot of confidence in him and Mr. Speaker, so far, we know that he is delivering, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I heard the member for Chosel indicate that the previous administration set a bar. Mr. Speaker, immediately when I hear sports metaphor, every single cell in my being jumps to life, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, the previous administration under their Minister of Education did set a bar. And she did set a bar when she indicated or stated publicly when it came to laptops, Kigain Kiasa, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, when you look at the previous tenure, Mr. Speaker, I have to say, as a sports individual and a former high jumper, that that bar that was set was very, very low, Mr. Speaker. And I dare say, Mr. Speaker, within the first year of this current Minister of Education, that bar was cleared with relative ease, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the information and the facts do not lie. And he mentioned it. We move from Kigain Kiasa to Tutgain Atutsa. Laptops delivered to every individual entering a secondary school, Mr. Speaker. Facilities fees paid for every individual attending school, Mr. Speaker. First generation scholarships, new initiative under this Minister of Education and this Prime Minister delivered to our people, Mr. Speaker. Maths and English paid, Mr. Speaker, at CXC level, Mr. Speaker. And the list goes on and on and on. So when we have any discussion about the direction of education in this country, when we have any discussion about any bar being cleared in education development in St. Lucia, this bar has been surpassed by this current St. Lucia Labour Party administration with flying colors, Mr. Speaker. And I dare say, in record time, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we are here today to approve this borrowing. And I'm elated, Mr. Speaker, that on this list that the Morshi Primary School has been identified to get some remedial work. This is because, Mr. Speaker, Morshi, in terms of the primary school, have had a number of issues that they have brought to my attention from very early. And of course, in conversation with the current principal, Mr. Troy Nestor, even before become parliament, becoming parliamentary rep, I always indicated that the desire to see Morshi Primary School in a better state would be of significant priority to me as a parliamentary rep. Mr. Speaker, my grandfather is from the community of Morshi. The school is one that I visit very often, the first day of every single school term. And we deliver as a, as a government school bags, school books, sometimes school shoes, and we get requests um, at the parliamentary office for additional assistance. And I will say that the current Prime Minister has made it a priority 
that before school opens, that we always have additional resources for the less fortunate children in the constituencies to get something to go to school with. And of course, Mr. Speaker, we've tried, and as the member for Sousa has said, 16 million EC is a drop in the bucket. We know the requirements for schools would be way more than currently is, but it is a significant start. And so, as I've seen with this Minister of Education, for instance, in the community of Grosley Town, for a number of years, since before COVID-19, the Grosley Library was closed. Nothing happened at the Grosley Library. And I will say it, and I'll continue to say it, a constituency bordering on 40,000 people, for any member to be serious about education, and a library is in disrepair or non-existent in our case, was absolutely ridiculous. And so, I am glad that this Minister of Education, despite some of the resources not being available, saw it fit to commence work on the Grosley Library. And so the people of Grosley will have their library fully functional in the coming months. And so, Mr. Speaker, as it pertains to the educational development of our people, I am extremely proud. And Mr. Speaker, I look forward to so much more because the enthusiasm is there at every cabinet meeting with this Prime Minister and with this Minister of Education, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, climate change is real. Having climate resilient schools is of extreme importance because it's not enough, I will agree, to provide some of the basics that children need to go to school. We also need to, need to look at their health and their safety. And as the Minister of Education went through with his presentation, you would hear some of the, the issues that existed for many, many years that could be harmful to our children. And so as a father, sometimes you consider what is the environment these children sit in the classrooms. And so being climate resilient, ensuring that we have safe schools, that we have proper structure, that they are well put together is of extreme importance to this government. And I'm very, very happy to see this happening currently. Mr. Speaker, we have other schools in our constituency, including Grand Rivier, that continue to ask for support. And of course, the Honorable Prime Minister and the member continues to, to, to look for creative ways to get things done as soon as possible. And I can say proudly that we are getting there. Also, for the persons living in a grocery town, you would see that work continues near the school. And the school definitely has indicated a need for repainting. And in the coming budget, we will be having discussion on some of what we are going to do for the Grosley Primary and Infant School. You would see a kid's playground being erected. And of course, the request has been made for additional sand that should be dropped off in that area to ensure that we have a safe environment for the children of Grosley. One of the things I'm proud of as a minister for youth and also the Member of Parliament for Grosely is the desire by this government to always think of the less fortunate, always. And I'm very happy that Rise St. Lucia, with individuals such as Venus Cherry, and of course the individuals from Seaview, born and raised in the community, have always approached their parliamentary rep, not just me, have always approached or have tried to make contact with their parliamentary rep for support for young people, especially school goers. And so we continue to support the back to school drive with the Seaview boys. And for the first time, since doing this thing for so many years, these young men giving away books and school supplies right by the Seaview, this time they did it at the HRDC, they would spend hours uh, individuals from Viewfort, Sioux Fresh, Chauzel, all over St. Lucia, including Grosley, would come in search of books. And they did it absolutely free. And all they requested was a meal and some water to carry on with their duties. And as parliamentary rep, I felt that 
step in and ensure that these boys were motivated and provided with that sort of assistance so they can continue to provide books, look for books, and distribute it throughout our constituency. And so, Mr. Speaker, the work continues. Our peanut butter pantry is also geared at school children. In the constituency of Grosley, a lot of us know what it is like to go to school without having breakfast. And this is a real situation in many of our constituencies. And so with RISE, we have sponsored the peanut butter pantry in the constituency at the HRDC, where individual families who are less fortunate, who in that month may not have had money to buy uh, basic things such as bread, milk, I mean tuna fish, cricks, they could come to the HRDC and they can find something to give their children to eat before they attend the Grosley Primary and Infant School. And of course, we've seen that spread to all other schools, persons are visiting that peanut butter pantry. This is the care, and this is the diligence, and this is the, the value we put on ensuring that our young people are taken care of and that they can go to school every single day. And so, Mr. Speaker, we'll continue to work We'll continue to work with this Minister of Education. I think we know that the ambition is there to keep going in all nooks and crannies of this country, but we have to always remember to, 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 remember to be patient. I remember in terms of Moshi, we'd be delivering some, some computers. And at the end of the day, this was what was available, distributed it to the school. And of course, sometimes we really want additional things done quickly, but with time and with patience, we will continue to get there. And so, our people, I want to say that this, this, this motion here today is something that we should all get on board with. I think we all can continue to see the progress being made by this government in education. And uh, just one more thing, the constituency of Grosley, in terms of scholarships, the first generation scholarships, and we always have that discussion, the member for Denry North, and he always pulls a list, and he comes to me and he says in his very cunning way, Grosley can I am extremely proud of the educational attainment of my constituency. The fact that this is all done based on merit, based on merit, not based on where you are from, what hole you come from, based on merit has given me as a parliamentary representative the unique sort of position of congratulating a number of individuals in my constituency with rewarding, who are being rewarded with scholarships. So I want to continue to encourage everybody that this is a government that believes in meritocracy. If you work hard, if you study, if you do well, we will be in a position to provide some level of support to you so you can rest assured that this government is working to ensure that the education of this nation continues to flourish. Definitely support this motion, and I certainly hope that we all can see the merit in it. Thank you so much.